This is Leah Myers of Myers Design Studio, and today we're going to do the Guy Signature Block number three for the Hearts and Heroes quilt that I have behind me. You can see that I've done the leaves and the heart, the half square triangles for the heart, and we're going to today paper piece some flying geese and the signature block that's in the center, and I I can't wait. So let's let's get started. And this is using the. Uh, foundation piecing paper. It's a, a lower grade type paper. It's a soft, not as, um, you know, pressed paper. And it's uh, not, uh, it doesn't appear to be like a bleach type paper, like copy paper. But if you can't find foundation piecing paper, I have an alternative, a, a technique that I've done because I've I've used some of these tools for years <laughs> because uh, I'm a graphic designer and I, I did package design, you know, some package design, I'd use this thing. So what this is, is a, it's, a, it's a, a cutting board and a score board, like your scoring paper. You can also use something um, like a foam, like that fun foam stuff, you can find it anywhere. and. Um, because what you want to do is, and this is a little tip, if you're going to use just uh, copy paper from the copy machine, you can just do this tip. And um, what you could also like stitch really small stitches, and then this would tear out easier because this paper is thicker and it, it's uh, more refined. It's pressed, you know, thinner and. Um, it's not like the lower quality foundation paper. But what I found that to, to help with uh, stitching through this is, and everyone has seen these. This is a pattern marking tool. You put like a graphite paper over and then you mark your patterns if you're making clothing. And I've always had these around um, and I've never used them until now. <laughs> so. This is my little tip. So if you get a scoreboard or a foam, foam board, a foam foam, not a foam core, that it would work, but it would you'd slice it up a lot. So take your ruler and just match it up with the line that you need to stitch through, right? So we're going to pre-perforate, blah, 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 I'm saying that, and we're just going to do that to the paper so that when you stitch over this line, if you're just using copy paper, you can, you know, stitch. And then when you come to, when you, uh, when you're ready to take the paper off, it won't rip your stitches out. And you just do that all across where you're going to sew, right? And, and in this case, this is the, this is the center signature block. And, um, this, I, I printed this by accident, <laughs> happy accident, I guess. Uh, I printed it on accident, and I'm I was thinking, yeah, well, I could show people what I do when I, and then when you go to fold it, it actually folds easier, too. So when you're folding, pre-folding your fabric before you sew, you can you can use this technique. Now, if you're doing this on the foundation paper, and I'm just gonna test it out here, and this is like you know before you start sewing, I'm gonna use a smaller smaller little straight edge. The straight edge doesn't have to be a roller. It just has to be straight. Anyway, so, and I can actually see the lines a little better through here. I don't know if this will, because the foundation paper is not, is a weaker type paper than the copy paper. So, let's see. Uh, okay. And, and I don't know if that it's certainly easier to fold. So you can probably pre, pre-score this as well. In fact, I kind of like the way it folds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pre-perforate this too. It's, it's not necessary. You do not have to do this, but I'm just gonna do this to, while we do this test block. Or well, do this block. I've already tested all these blocks. And I decided to do the foundation piecing and this 
because uh, flying geese can be a little hard. Um, I've, I've, you know, I've done all sorts of mistakes with flying geese. So I'm just going to pre perforate all the lines that I have to sew on. And I didn't do this when I sewed mine. I just folded them and it works fine. You could just fold, you know, you could just fold it. In fact, I just held it in my hands. I didn't use a straight edge. I just folded it on the line like that. And then I'm going to do that for the rest of the rest of this. But I just want to see, I'm going to test this out and see if it works uh, any better. It certainly folds faster, like, because you've already got a crease line there. But, uh, yeah. So if you don't know, if you've never used this tool, you can use it now. Anyway, I'm going to uh, keep folding this, and we're going to start uh, sewing our block. Okay, now, all right, we are going to start putting the fabric onto here. And I did a few things that, um, well, I'm, I'm sure if, if you're used to paper piecing, this is what paper piecing is. Um, this isn't new to you, but if you're new, then this will be helpful. Anyway, um, what I did is I pre-cut these triangles. They are a lot bigger than these triangles, a lot bigger. And the reason why I did that is if I went too small, I would have some place where it didn't get sewn on. But you can just use a, a scrap. Like, I, I just, you know, cut these really roughly um, into triangle shapes. And it's way bigger than this little thing right here. <laughs> but I, trust me, I needed the rim. So, so the first thing I do is, and you want right sides together on the back side of this. So, first thing I did is I take um, a fabric safe glue. I'm using the Fonz and, Por the Fonz and Porter uh, stick or a glue stick. This is what I used. And I just put on the very first one, you start at the bottom and you work your way up. I used a little dab in the middle, a little circle. And believe me, this will stick. And I just placed it over. And you'll notice, okay, I'm going to just press it down. You'll notice that it's it's hanging off the end. Believe me, you want this to kind of overlap. I mean, uh, hang hang off the end because <laughs> I threw away two of these before I got to the <laughs> to this stage, and I roughly cut out. and I'll show you how I did that in just a second because I'm gonna need some more. And and I perforated this. It's working out okay. It may, I, you know, as I sew this, I wonder if it will fall apart. If it does, then I'll redo it. So it, it, I think I have the pattern written or how you, um, I have to fold this, this side first. And match the straight edges. And these are not quite a quarter of an inch. So before I sew, I'm going to trim this down. Trim this down to a quarter of an inch now. This is a little quarter of an inch thing. And then I sew that seam. Uh, but yes, and I sew that first. I don't, I don't trim the other side. But I went ahead and pre-cut out all these triangles first. And uh, oop, I had that one backwards. I was like, <laughs> I got two lights. Anyway, the, I pre-cut pre out these. Um, just to be a faster or more efficient way. You don't have to. You can just cut up triangles. But anyway, now I'm going to go ahead and sew it. All right. So now I'm just, I'm going to reposition this fabric over. And then um, I'm going to put a little pen. Uh, let's see. So you can see it in the camera. So I, no, you can't really see it, but I'll, I'll show it to you in a second. I will show it to you. Let me position this right over that, because I want it to fill that space. And believe me, I have I have done this so many times that I've, I've sewn something, and then it's not. Okay, so I'm pinning it together so it holds it, holds it in place so I can stitch right there. 
and and then go ahead and stitch. Oops. Okay. All right, I'm gonna put the needle down. There we go. And so over that line, and then take it off. Machine needle up. I'm just gonna turn these little threads. And then I'm gonna go ahead and iron this open. And from the back side, dry iron. I, I didn't really see any problem with uh, steam. I, oops, I didn't have any problems with steam. Uh, and it's a big triangle. It's wanting to wrinkle over here. So anyway, but you want that, you can get a, you could do a smaller, you could do a smaller uh, triangle. I just went way bigger, but because I sewed this a lot and I was trying not to do that. So at the top, I just take a quarter inch measure, quarter inch measure, okay, and then I trim it off, right, oops. Or I attempt to trim it off. There's one little thing there. And let me get this out of the way. And okay, so I trimmed it off at the top. And now I'm going, and I'm not going to worry about the edges just right now. Sometimes I'll trim that just because I want to see how it's working out. And now I've get my other rough cut triangle. And I am going to, so the, to fill this space, it's got to go that direction. So I kind of like flip it around in the direction that I want it to go. And I know that this is in a quarter of an inch. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter now or later, but I'm just going to turn it right now. But, you know, just because. Let's turn it. Okay. Well, possibly. I need to, I need to change my blade out, I guess. There we go. And, oop, and remember to pin it. Pin it down so it doesn't move. Okay, so pre pre perforating this is is working out okay, and then you just sew on the line, and you do this over and over and over again. I'll do one more, and I'll I'll show you the next, and you just sew on the line. It's super super easy, and I love paper piecing because of that. You you can get a very dramatic. Um, Line, line, oh wow, I've got a lot of thread here. <laughs> yeah, got a lot of thread. So I'm filming this earlier in the day. In my last video, my dogs were hungry and it was getting very close to their uh, feeding time, but they, and I'll show you a picture. I'll, I'll show you a picture here. So, and then after you sew it, you flip it, flip it, and you, and you iron it. Just gently. And I've used a very large triangle so it wants to flip over. That's fine. And I let I let, I let it sit here for a bit, just for a second. And put it back on. And then I just repeat it. So I want to clean up the, uh, see I used an oversized triangle, right? An oversized and let me let me tighten the shot a little bit. See I used an this way. I used an oversized triangle, right? And so you can see that I am getting close to not having the a quarter inch right there. So that's real helpful to have that big, uh, and this is a giant triangle that I'm sewing on here. All right, let me widen the shot back out. So you can see me sewing. <laughs> yeah, it it's close to not being, but it's enough to be okay. So I'm going to clean up that edge. And I'm going to put my next one. 
So as I did these, I, I put them in order the way I wanted them to be done. You can pick any order you like. Um, I uh, want the little sparkly medium, medium one. And so you want right sides together. Remember that. I uh, actually sewed a whole one that weren't that wasn't right sides together. That was fun. <laughs> oh, paper piecing. If you haven't done it in a while, you've got to just practice it a little bit. I I I did two of these before I got it right. Um, I know how to do it. I know the technique. I have done it before. But you just got to practice it. You know, don't think that at the very beginning you're going to get it right the first time. If you, I'm, I'm pretty patient. Um, person. I think with sewing, there's some things I'm patient with. And then there's some things I go. But yeah, I try to just let it, let it go, let it go. And then again, um, you know, iron it down, iron it down. And what's really cool, and, and the reason why I designed it this way is because I was thinking, I've got to make, what, 32 of these things? I don't want to fuss with those tiny little, you know, triangles. I'm not doing that. So I wanted to make it easy for you. Oops. It, it doesn't matter. Either one side or the other you can start with. It's, you know, I numbered them. You can follow the numbers. So I just want to make it easy for you. Follow the numbers. And see, I've got a ton left over here. You can see that. I can see, you can see that. Great. And uh, there we go. And I uh, trim that. Now I need some more of these white triangles. And this is what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how I did this. Now, I absolutely, by eye, roughly done, and this is probably going to scare some people, but I just kind of cut a square, like a, a square, and if this doesn't work out, I'll, I'll do it again, because <laughs> I have patience, right? Yeah. Does anyone believe me out there? Possibly. I don't know. So I rough, roughly cut out a triangle. I mean, I just, I just cut it. And I also look for the grain. You know, I'm looking at the grain. The grain is the, the crossing of the threads in the fabric. Um, and then I cut it in a rough triangle. Super rough. Um, because I didn't want to fussy cut a whole bunch of these triangles. So I got tired of doing that. So I said, oh, I'm just going to cut them by hand. So that's how that came out. So I uh, line up the edges again. And this time I can just, you know, put it at the quarter of an inch because I've already trimmed it. Remember to pin on top so that you don't pick up the pattern and the white triangle stays there. And then you sew. I'm going to do this one more time. You can fast forward to the next step. If you don't want to watch me doing this the whole time. It's fine. And then sew on the line. Sew on the line. And I'll tell you, getting a, doing flying geese like this a little bit is a little easier for me. Um, as far as... And I'm just going to pre-finger press this down before I iron this and so I don't have to fight with this because it's huge. It's a big triangle. I mean, it's much bigger than you need, so you could get away with a smaller one. But And uh, as far as paper piecing, I think, so you just fold it back over at, at this at the top line. Don't cut right where you sewed, where you sewed the seam. Ask me how I know that too. I did that about three times before I was like, you know, 
that's okay. You're, you're having fun. You're doing a craft. Okay, now fold the other side. Put your, cor this is a little quarter of an inch uh, marker thing. I got it in a magazine a long time ago, but there's a lot of different ones. There's a lot of quarter of an inch seam things. That, uh, so many different companies have them. And uh, put it on top, put the, you know, the pieces together again, the little triangle, pin it, and then sew. One more time. So see how it's coming together? They're perfect little, and it, and you see a perfect point right there. You can see that on these these guys. Perfect points. Awesome. Love it. And Because flying geese, the difficulty with flying geese is that there's bias edges. Uh, and I've done these a lot of different ways. I've made them uh, four at a time method. I've done them you know, like a triangle at a time. And that's how I was starting to write this, is the triangle at a time, you know, cut out the triangles. And I was like, doing 32 of these, let's just do paper piecing. That will be easy. It will become, it will get to be the right size and nobody's going to be frustrated, you know, at this. Um, and as you see, we're, well, you can see part of the quilt here. We're getting there. We're getting there to the end. Okay, so now I have finished my paper pieces and or uh, piecing for the uh, flying geese, and I've taken the paper off, and I've I've assembled my block here. I've also cut three and a half inch squares for the ends, and I chose a darker blue, and I also paper pieced the center signature block as well. Um, what I found with the leaf, the leaves were great, but and I'll show you a leaf. The um, the center part right here, it it has a little bit of bias, and so does the uh, so does the uh, leaf. So I I decided to do a paper piece one for this one. I didn't design it for these, but it was fine. Uh, if you have problems with bias, just cut it a little uh, larger, and then cut it down and square them up, and that should that should fix that. Anyway, so now we're ready to put these together. And I put it together like the pattern says. Uh, well, did I really? Uh, let's see. Um, well, I kind of like it this way, where these two are going the same direction. That one. Oh, wait. I have it upside down. Huh? <laughs> I thought it was, it was right. <sighs> anyway. I have it exactly how the power is. These guys are pointing down. These guys are pointing that way. Yes. Helps put the pattern in the right direction. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so I'm just going to just put these together, you know, row by row. And then um, stitch them together. Row by row. And I am matching seams, so I will nest them. And we'll be finished with this this one uh, block three. It's a really it's it's more complicated than the other blocks, but once you get these done, you'll be like really you'll really really be proud of yourself. I mean, I am. I'm proud of myself. And I just pick them up one at a time. And I'm not I'm not pinning. Not at this point. When I'm matching seams, I pin a lot. But uh, right now, I'm just going to sew these guys together. Make sure that they're on the edge. There we go. And don't put, like, just be gentle when you're holding this. If you find that you're uh, kind of, you know, rough handling it, then pin it. Pin it so that you don't stretch it out. Because, boy, I tell you. Uh, um, flying geese can give you some issues, I think. But some people probably are, you know, you probably really have no problems with this. I I just find, in fact, um, I did a, one quilt and I did that four at a time flying geese method, and I made so many. I still have, and I don't even know how to put them in a in an orphan. Uh, Maybe I'll make a, a, t a table runner 
that's an idea. I just came up with that while I was talking. And so, just like every other block, it's uh, what other people have said, it's like putting a miniature quilt together. So there's my center. There's my end. And it's coming together nicely. Perfect. And now I just put the other ends on. The little three and a half inch square. And I, I went with a darker one. So it's really going to show up in that quilt. Um, you know, mix up the the uh, the colors. And in fact, I use fat quarters for the colors. In the leaves, the, the leaf blocks, I could get at least two, <clears throat> at least two blocks, if I could just step on this right, at least two blocks from one fat quarter. I could squeeze out a bit more, um, I mean, I, I actually got three one time. I'm not really sure how, but I did. I got three blocks out of one, one, uh, one fat, one fat quarter. All right, so, so now I'm pinning the blocks together. And um, it's looking good. I, I, I went with a little darker color, blue. I could, I could put pink in there, like the pink that's in the heart as well. I could just do all pinks, but I kind of like to have a variety of colors. And plus I used uh, fat quarters for the uh, color part. I have a ton of fat quarters. I'm trying to use them because they, they sit on my, my shelf forever. Okay, I'm going to just sew this one thing at a time. I can pin both. And so both, but I'm just gonna go ahead and so and uh, using the 319 Singer 319. It has little uh, typewriter keys on the top. It's so cute. So cute. and uh, I absolutely love it. And it. I think I've mentioned this before, but it has kind of an industrial feel. Like it's, it's a little different from a home sewing machine. Oh, <laughs> just a little, little pinprick there. <laughs> just stab myself with a pin. Ooh. Yeah. I don't like doing that. It, it hurts. Okay, now we've got that one going down, going that way. Okay, it's fine. All right, and you can arrange these geese going in any direction you want. You can follow the pattern, or you can like make them like go, you know chase each other. You know they're all pointed in a circle. It's fine. It. It's your box. I mean, it's your your quilt, your your style. I just thought flying geese would look nice in this quilt, so that's why I did it. Yep. So, uh, uh, this sewing machine is one of the early zigzag machines, and Singer. I don't know what they're thinking about the typewriter keys. That's kind of cool looking. But when you refurbish this machine, it, it's a little tricky. As my sister mentioned before. It's a little tricky. Because there's a lot of parts. Um, if you have a straight stitch singer, you know, it only does straight stitches. They're a little easier to refurbished because there's not as many moving parts and whatnot. Okay, so I'm going to sew it from this side, I guess. All right. And then we'll be done with this block. We'll be done. Yay. <laughs> and if you, if you want to make this quilt that I have created and you just want to use that heart shape, 
you know, and then put any 12 and a half inch block you want on the inside. It's fine. I'm just giving you a, like a frame, like, like a picture frame. And, um, you put that, you put whatever picture you want inside that frame. It's fine. You can make it as elaborate or as easy as you want. I have a, um, harder blocks in this one, but I have easy ones. Like I have a four square block in there. You could just do four square blocks and fill it in. But I'm giving you an option. You know, if you're a beginning quilter, just do the four squares and the half square triangles. And then that, and it will look just that's fabulous, and whoever you give that quilt to, they'll love it, absolutely love it. So let's just give this a press. And I'm going to press on to the inside. And normally I'd set the seam. I'm just being quick, because I'm sure you guys don't want to watch me iron this whole episode, <laughs> right? Yeah, and my seams look good. My points are all right. Pretty happy. Now, if you make a mistake, you know, just uh, on, on the, let me grab some water and put some water on top of this a little bit. So it lays a little bit flatter. Oh, there we go. Because this is a dry iron. I just want it to lay, actually. Lay a little bit flatter without burning my hands. Wow, this really turned out pretty. I love it. I absolutely love it. Ah, this would be a nice quilt by itself. Like, if you made a whole quilt just with this block, these corner blocks would turn into one bigger block. You could, you know, alternate the color so it'd look like a four square. So you wouldn't even be able to tell which one, where the block started and ended and stuff. It would be kind of a trick of the, trick of the, you know, so... So this is the Geese Signature Block number three for our Hearts of Heroes quilt. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really appreciate you liking and subscribing to my videos. And I hope to see you on the next one. It's going to be block number four for the Hearts of Heroes quilt. Thank you for watching.